Well, Paul, I would say, is one of the Isle of Man's most exciting and brilliant poets. He was the son of a Manx woman, a Manx Irish woman, and a Polish um, person who came to the Isle of Man station at Jerby in the RAF during the Second World War. And then he grew up around Ramsey, particularly around South Ramsey, went through various different jobs and eventually became a gardener. But in the evenings, he took on the role as a brilliant, exciting performer of his own poetry around the pubs and clubs around the island, but particularly in Ramsey. So what sort of poems uh, were they? What did they focus on? Well, a great thing about Paul's work is that he has these very different voices. And so on the one end, you might have the beautiful, reflective, nostalgic, um, beautiful poems. And then you might have these hilariously funny um, character sketches or comments on life at the time, right through on the far end, the anger and vitriol at the, um, what he saw as the erosion of Manx life, which was going on around him at the time. So these were all based on, on the Isle of Man and, and, and Manx life and Manx events? Oh, yeah. yeah. He was absolutely a Manx poet. He was a central part of the Manx cultural revival, which was going on at the time. He was very good friends with Brian Stowell, for instance, and the the revival of Manx music. So you mentioned some of the more provocative political work. What inspired that? Was it a reflection of the time? Yes, and I think perhaps people of our generation might be almost surprised to discover the the issues which he's dealing with here. The things like the new resident policies of the 70s, 80s, 90s, where the where it was a policy of the time to try and get new people coming to settle in the Isle of Man. And there's a massive um, onset of building all over the Isle of Man. And things like in Ramsey, for instance, what was called Old South Ramsey was bulldozed, for want of a better word, to build the houses which are now around the swimming pool in Queen's Court area. And Paul saw this and the erosion of the society which he knew in these places and he saw the change and he was angered by it. And, and you mentioned he was close friends with Brian Stoll and others. Did that inspire his work further, being in that community and in that close association with, with other people who were, in different ways, uh, furthering sort of uh, the nationalist cause to a certain extent? Yeah, absolutely. Paul was um, also something of a musician, He played the um, accordion, I believe, and um, he converted many of his poems into songs. Many of these poems are songs. For instance, he has a very funny poem set to the tune of Elian Bannon, which is about Paul Dewey Tip up in Ramsey. And so he would sing this song about getting free stuff, luckies off the tip. And it's this sort of playing with tradition and music, making it contemporary and fun. Would you what would you say is the sort of uh, style that, that he went for? Is it the subversion of perhaps songs like you mentioned there, uh, Ellen Van, and that with those sort of contemporary at the time uh, issues? Yeah, I think that's certainly one of his key forms of poetry. This challenging subversion, having fun with, even when he's at his most um, uh, romantic, for better words, or at his most angry, he still has this element of fun and it's this it's clearly an an incredibly inventive clever chap is working in words just having fun all the time so how was he received at the time you you mentioned his performances uh how was his work widely known or has it become more known subsequently um i think he was widely known certainly in certain circles around the isle of man at the time um Anyone who we really have contact with around Culture Bannon of that generation will know Paul. And um, certainly around Ramsey, he's a very, very well-known person. But after his death, there was only, thanks to the work of George Broderick and Charles Gard at Culture Bannon, there was a recording put out called Six Foot Under where you could hear Paul giving his own readings of these poems. But until now, this has been the only access to his work And so inevitably, it's become harder to hear his stuff over the past 25 years. And so it's very nice to reintroduce them now. Tell us about the reintroduction then. Um, We've got a a book, 63 selected poems. What can you tell me? Well, these poems 
um, were gathered in from his recordings and also his notebooks. Um, his brother went in at his death, went in and gathered up these hundreds of notebooks and loose pieces of paper, envelopes, um, beer mats, all of these little scraps. And he's guarded them very safely and eventually entrusted them to Culture Bannon to transcribe, um, edit together conflicting versions of poems and then create this book. And it really is this coming together of all these different voices and all these different parts of the story to really represent Paul and his work. Do you think it was really crucial to make sure it was enshrined in some sort of book, as you say? Um, and was there ever a fear that it, that it wasn't going to get collected and, and the impetus for that might have been lost? It took... Um, yes, I think it's essential that these are in print. Uh, the key thing for me is that Paul's poetry is very good. It's an, a key part for me of what Max literature is, part of the canon. His voice is unique alongside people like T.E. Brown and Kujig and Kathleen Farragher. His is a name which should be there. But I think also, more than this, it's also a record of the time and the people. But a key part of it is that it's our poetry. It's so good. It's not just Paul's. It's... It's a period and it is very much the writings of the Isle of Man and of the Manx of that period and today. Do you think by putting this in this form, it will bring it more into a popular consciousness? Yes, I'm sure it will. This is a key Manx work and it's exciting to think of what new Manx poetry will be created in this vein in the future. Well, do you think there's still appetite for maybe some of the more provocative stuff? I mean... I know that we've got lots of poets on the Isle of Man, not really politically charged or in a, in, a, in as overt a way as Paul's stuff might be. Do you think it might encourage that? Yes, I'm sure it will. Uh, poetry is a tool for many things, and one of the key things which Paul illustrates in the Manx context is that it can be a, a tool for change and for good and even for anger, and these are things which need to be heard. Now, there is an event. Uh, it's a launch next Friday. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. The poems, uh, the book's already appearing in the bookshops and available, mm. but we're having a launch or a celebration of his poetry and life in the Mitre in Ramsey on Friday the 4th from 7 o'clock. And it's going to be hopefully an event like he would have read his own poems at. It'll be songs, tunes, readings of the work and just a... A happy gathering of like-minded people to celebrate Paul and his poetry.